So I try to be as clear as possible and dealing with not culture in general, but cultural heritage especially. And, it's, it's, it, and I do believe that, of course, sustainability is much widely connected with culture as a whole. But as being an architect and conservator, I am focusing and speaking about cultural heritage. The, those are the topics I try to cover during my presentation. Can you hear me well? It's OK? OK. So I speak a bit about cultural heritage. It's not new for you, but anyway, uh, about understanding. It's a bit about sustainability issues, a development potential, and carrying capacity. It is my favorite issue. I'm making research here in this institute about this one. And uh, what about the shared heritage, which is like intercultural, but not exactly the same. And finally, I try to give you a kind of my conclusion. Maybe not the general, but let's, let's go in this way. So the first of all, the first topic I want to uh, start with is cultural heritage. And uh, as you know well, it's, it's not a very old uh, uh, definition. And uh, it, is, it was born more or less in, in the end of the 60s, beginning of the 70s, the last century, to the 20th century. And I don't know at which level you can see that. It is a bilingual something, speaking about heritage. My point was with this uh, chart, which had to be even three-dimensional, just to show you that heritage is one whole something. But we cut it in pieces just in order to be able to deal with. But otherwise, it's interconnected very much. And of course, uh, 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 the two big branches, natural and cultural heritage. And my topic is mostly here, the cultural heritage. And uh, that's very interesting. I, later on, I will speak about that. Uh, we, sp we, sp we speak about tangible, intangible heritage. And I uh, uh, um, take the liberty to put a third one, which is artistic, because at least in Hungarian, the translation of intangible, the salami, which means more or less spiritual, is not clearly cover the issue. And uh, artistic heritage is, is, uh, is arts, literature, music, and so on, which is not exactly the same as, as intangible heritage. So it is a quite complicated issue. And of course, you can understand that uh, both of them uh, have a, a different dimension. The tangible heritage always has it, 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 its <coughs> intangible dimension and vice versa. So, OK. And this is my main line is about the tangible heritage and uh, uh, built heritage. But also, we do have archaeological, movable items, and so on. And you can see that uh, when we're going in the details, more and more we are start to be dealing with uh, not only single monuments, or historic gardens, or ensembles, but also protected areas. And we arrive to cultural landscape, which is very much connected with natural reality. So just, just to show you, I don't want to very long about this one. You can see beautiful arrows and everything. So interconnection is there. Uh, my, my message was, but you, all, all of you know well, that heritage is only one. But uh, we, we are not able to see everything at the same very moment, so we are just cut it in pieces, which is a, they are not killing, just cutting in pieces and putting that later, at, at least I hope. And the next point is, uh, you can understand that I was uh, very much, uh, still very much uh, uh, dedicated to the conservation of historic monuments and sites. I was working, uh, uh, I used to work for a uh, central national office for, for more than 35 years. But you can understand that History monuments are not exactly the same as heritage, as culture, as a built heritage. I want to be very clear on this very topic. So I show you a very classical one uh, from Athens, uh, the Propylaia. And uh, you can see here uh, uh, the, uh, 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 something which is, can also be seen as heritage. And uh, uh, the biggest uh, point I wanted to uh, communicate to you that each and every historic monument is a cultural heritage property. But not all cultural properties are historic monuments. And one more point, the uh, cultural heritage is an analogical something. So there are different levels. The heritage of mine, maybe the armchair of my father, for you is nothing. To me, it's a very important heritage. It's very similar with persons, families, communities, cities, regions, 
And of course, we arrive only, only to world heritage. But uh, the point is, just go back for a while, Hisek monuments are always and only uh, 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 declared in a national level. So this is a very special level of heritage. And for world heritage, is a requirement to be, uh, to be uh, the, for the heritage property to be protected on the, on the uh, uh, national level. So in other words, even in this very famous UNESCO Convention uh, on the uh, uh, protection of world culture and natural heritage, there's a bit of confusion. Because uh, we're speaking about cultural heritage, but dealing with historic monuments and ensembles. So it is a bit confusing, but anyway, it's OK. And it was, uh, you can see, already adopted in uh, 1972. And his uh, younger brother or sister, I don't know, convention maybe is a brother. So it was born only in 2003 about uh, uh, intangible heritage. And I have to confess you, before 2003, nobody was using this expression tangible heritage. It was born in order to be able to make a differentiation with intangible. Intangible is used by UNESCO. UNESCO doesn't like very much the, the folklore as an expression, sorry. So it's mostly about folklore. But anyway, not only, but mostly. Intangible heritage is very much important. And of course, uh, uh, I don't want to enter in the, in the details, but they are really fundamental uh, differences between two kinds of uh, conventions and implementation of conventions. <coughs> and the next one, still in connection with UNESCO and the global issues, it is the Historic Urban Landscape Recommendation. It started to be, it was uh, supposed to be another convention, but finally became only a recommendation with dealing with, uh, with the Historic Urban Landscape in its uh, development. And this is a uh, actually a very much important UNESCO document in order to, not to replace, but to, to complete a former one from 1976, the so-called Nairobi recommendation about the, the uh, uh, urban entities and the social context of urban entities. And this is my, my next point, that of course, monuments and sites, built heritage are very much important, but uh, hopefully you are agree with me, peoples and communities are even more important than the build something. And this is the, the very uh, uh, crucial and strong point, uh, heritage and society, the, the connection between uh, heritage and society. And you can understand this is a, a punctum salience, a starting point, uh, if you are looking back to differentiation between monuments and sites. Because uh, 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 communities uh, can uh, uh, understand or, or adopt uh, different things as heritage, which are not really uh, on the scientific or artistic level as a historic monument. And uh, uh, heritage is always connected, uh, you can see, with places, with, uh, with uh, special expressions, sometimes with jokes, like this cat on the, on the, on the wall. So this heritage uh, it has ex an expression society. And in, in the good and normal cases, uh, they are uh, very much in connection and complementarity, but it's not always the case. You will hear about something later on. OK, the next point is uh, maybe the, the, uh, after the, uh, uh, the uh, intangible convention of UNESCO on European level, as I know that, uh, that you are not only for Europe here, but the European level, the Council of Europe uh, produced the, the, the fourth convention in, uh, convention, uh, in in connection with uh, 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 heritage, cultural heritage, and it was the so-called Faro Convention, which is, a, let's say, an umbrella convention, completing the, the, the previous three ones, the Grandada Convention about built heritage, the Malta or Valletta Convention about archaeology, and the third one is the European Landscape Convention, the so-called Florence Convention. And this is exactly speaking about the, uh, our main topic, which is uh, the, con uh, the interconnection between uh, uh, communities and the heritage. And uh, even the title of this convention is uh, already very uh, clear that uh, this is a convention on the value of cultural heritage for society. So not, not uh, only uh, valuing uh, uh, heritage as such. And maybe I read out this only paragraph which I was taking from this. The Faro Convention emphasized the important aspects of heritage as they relate to human rights and democracy. 
It promotes a wider understanding of heritage and its relationship to community and society. So the convention encourages to, encourages to recognize the, the objects, their places are not in themselves. What is important about cultural heritage? They are important because of many meanings and uses that people attach to them and the values they represent. So this is really a clear, a very clear message. Uh, later on I will speak about a bit more how cultural heritage is born. Okay, this was uh, more or less my first introduction about cultural heritage. The next one, if you allow me to run, uh, for uh, this is sustainability issues. It's also not so old approach. If I'm not wrong, it was really uh, more or less born in, in, the, in the 80s of uh, the, the, the uh, 20th century. And of course, as an architect, uh, I, I, I had a special feeling about sustainability of old buildings and so on. And this is thanks to my friend, uh, architect and research. This is a, a building from the upper land of the Balaton region. It was uh, a quite a, um, a very sad position and they restored or reconstructed a very interesting uh, mixture of restoration and reconstruction and giving the uh, uh, new use. I, I think it's really important to understand that sustainability means that something has to be sustainable. And, and if he has a, take an example from the buildings, to sustain this kind of buildings is already very much difficult. Not only because there is no function, but that they technically is difficult. If something has a function, and even more, <coughs> technically is okay. The maintenance is a possibility. So I truly believe that maintenance is not exactly the same as sustainability. I wanted to tell you only that sustainability needs some strong and, and uh, solid basis uh, something to be sustainable. But about the expression. So I confess you, I don't like very much the expression sustainable development. Development to me, it is uh, somehow, it is, uh, how to say, it's too strong. And in and, uh, many cases, uh, uh, when we are saying sustainable development, we are thinking sustainable growth, which is not really the same. We, we should not have com confusion with that. And I know it's a bit provocative, but I think the, 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 the issue is with sustainability, maybe a, a sustainable quality of, quality of life or a sustainable development of quality of life or a sustainable balance between resources and their use for quality development. So this is uh, uh, an open question. Uh, in, in, in my approach, I do believe that uh, sustainability really related to cultural heritage because all of the existing values uh, have to be uh, used for a longer term, uh, recognized and used, but let's go further. And of course, all of you know those charts I took from the internet uh, about the three main pillars of sustainability, the economic, environmental, and social. I don't really uh, want to enter by because I use this because of the next slides. And, and, but the only, maybe the only point, as you also uh, know very well, that the intersection of three of them is really something which is sustainable. And of course, in the other, um, uh, except from the uh, international known uh, approaches that uh, economic is maybe related to the profit, environment to the planet, and social to the people. So this, these are the more or less the biggest uh, approaches to sustainability. But I was using these three pillars because I want to add the fourth one. This is the culture. And not, it's not my invention, of course, as, as you know well, but uh, uh, it's very much interesting than, than this issue uh, or this approach or idea with sustainable started, the culture was not there. And it has been added uh, later on as, as, a, as a very much important force pillar. I will uh, give it a bit more detail in this small picture later in the bigger you will see. But anyway, uh, the, uh, uh, the, the, the message once more again, quite shortly, that, uh, uh, that uh, maybe for some this is not the fourth pillar. And I, I, I do believe uh, from geometrics that yes, uh, uh, the three pillars are more stable as four. A, a, a chair with three legs is much more stable as with, with four legs. But anyway, we do need really this uh, fourth something as maybe an overarching um, approach and not, not a pillar. But anyway, I wanted to add here because uh, I think that if you are looking only these three ones, 
it's, it's, it's uh, very much technical, even the, the social part of it is very much technical, and, and uh, we really have to add this uh, uh, material, non-material material dimension of culture as a very much important uh, um, uh, element or, 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 or supporting uh, approach of, of sustainability. And uh, I don't want to be enter in details. I do really hope that you, all of you, uh, already met with the uh, sustainable de development goals, and uh, and uh, of course uh, it is not mostly or not only for cultural heritage. You know this beautiful chart with six, uh, 17 main items. It's quite a long document, uh, a very subtitle and so on. But I wanted to to take out only this one that uh, the 11.4, uh, which is about uh, uh, strengthen efforts to protect and safeguard the world's culture and natural heritage. Uh, uh, I want to add that not the world heritage, but the world's culture and natural heritage. So not only this 1,000 item on the world heritage list, but generally speaking. And of course, I go back to these expressions, make our cities inclusive, safe, resilient, and sustainable. So this is quite ambitious, I know, but it's all of them, all goals, are inter interrelated, of course, very much. But uh, uh, sometimes, as very similar with the family tree of the cultural heritage, uh, everything makes, uh, creates a whole, but we have to deal with it separately and focusing on different parts of it. But never forget about cooperation, coordination, and, and the common work. OK, and uh, the next one, because we are here in a most initiative, so let's, let's mention the, the most, uh, which is the which is a management of social transformation program of uh, UNESCO. So it's not uh, like uh, world heritage or, or intangible heritage. It's, uh, it's not a convention, it's a program, but uh, not less important. And as you can see, uh, the most uh, program is contributes to development to the eradication of poverty, to inclusive and sustainable res responses the environmental change and to the promotion of inclusive, effective, and accountable governance, as well as to achievement of UNESCO's global priorities, Africa and gender equality. So this is also some lines, but it's very, very strong and very ambitious. And uh, if you are going back for uh, a while for this uh, uh, chart, you can see the poverty eradication is very, really the first one. Maybe uh, the, the sequence or, or the, the, how the points are uh, uh, put it, it's not exactly the important, but maybe yes. So it's, it's not by chance that uh, most is uh, first of all uh, deals with eradication of poverty. Now, uh, very few words about my um, uh, beloved uh, NGO, which is the uh, International Council of Monuments and Sites, the, which is dealing with uh, monument conservation, and of course also had the challenge how to uh, make uh, make uh, how to follow or how to digest the, the paradigm shift from monument and sites to cultural heritage. It's not really digested already, but anyway, uh, ECOMOS uh, last year uh, had its uh, General Assembly in, in, in India, New Delhi, and, and uh, it was about sustainability, cultural heritage, and sustainable development. So really, no, it, it, was not, it was 2007, I, I'm sorry, it is a mistake. Anyway, it means that uh, for both sides, this is a, a, a new uh, opening that uh, a better understanding that the Carter heritage uh, can, be, have, can play an important role in sustainable development. Let's use this word uh, if it is uh, normal for using. And uh, this is only, check, the, only an illustration, but the, the, the meaning is uh, with this hub, uh, which is a cupola of uh, Centennial Hall in Wroclaw in Poland, that. Uh, ECOMOS is really a part of this cooperation. And, and uh, of course, there are a lot of international movement and, and programs and projects. So uh, uh, it is uh, already in itself, it's a very complicated uh, and difficult task uh, uh, how, to, how to and to which uh, program join uh, in order to, to reach the, the final uh, uh, goals of the sustainable uh, the development goals. OK, now uh, the next point, if you do, if you do have time, OK, I try to, uh, uh, how to say, speed up. 
So it's the development potential and carrying capacity of culture and the properties. So it is really something uh, important. So you can understand that uh, uh, more and more uh, cultural heritage properties became as a raw materials for for uh, for uh, tourism, for for uh, uh, different uh, uh, development uh, pro programs. Sometimes, uh, as an old conservative conservator, I have the feeling that historic monuments or cultural heritage properties are all used as, as, as excuses for different other kind of programs. And uh, fortunately, it is uh, already uh, a quite developed solution, the so-called integrated conservation, which is uh, uh, a, a very uh, important approach. It means that the integrated conservation means that uh, both uh, the, the safeguard of existing uh, uh, heritage values and to reach the development, sustainable development goals they are uh, served in the same time, in the same program. But the, the issue is that how to identify the carrying capacity of uh, specific uh, 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 cultural heritage items. Now, I had the chan chance here in Köseg uh, to be a, a researcher, thank you very much, uh, uh, and one of my programs was really uh, uh, identification of carrying capacity, and and uh, which means that to, to recognize and to to investigate the the, the imminent or intransigent um, comp uh, characteristics of historic monuments capacity uh, identification, l l like in a, in, a, in an elevator, you know, they're always signed that how many people can be. Uh, can use it in, a, in, in once, and it is very similar. I don't want really to uh, uh, go to details, but it's very much important to, to, to understand that, that uh, cultural heritage properties, buildings, ensembles, cultural landscapes, industrial heritage, and so on, have always a, a development potential, but not unlimited. So uh, we always have to be. Uh, I have to say, uh, have to understood that is a carrying capacity, which mostly used for tourism, but not only for tourism, changes and 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 new functions and so on, and has to be uh, understood and identified. And I, I uh, promise you to to go back to this the the, the beautiful chart with the the, the four pillars. This was a, a very interesting. Uh, uh, program in, in, in the European framework again, which is a cultural heritage counts for Europe, counts in, in two different meaning, uh, counts as, as uh, counting something and, and also it is it's valuable for something. So it's two meanings are here and it was a huge collection on European level of, of different uh, uh, projects and programs based on cultural heritage properties. And the result was really interesting, and this is the the final final chart of uh, um, this uh, the result of this uh, uh, cultural heritage based uh, investigation and development, which will clearly um, uh, shows that this uh, cultural leg or 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 uh, cultural part of this uh, this flower is, is also a petal of this flower is also important. And you can also see, uh, sorry, I, it would be possible to speak each and every part of this uh, very detailed uh, manner, but uh, it's not, not the, the possibility here. But only want to show you that, OK, the social and economic and environmental, of course, uh, uh, very much important. But uh, the, the picture can be only completed if the culture is also taken account. And this, uh, I, I repeat myself, is the final, uh, how to say, summary of a very detailed and large, uh, huge work uh, with uh, supporting examples. So it's not just uh, imagination or, or beautiful ideas or, or theories, but it's really supported by, by uh, hard uh, figures. OK, one more, or let's some more uh, items. Resilience, I think. Uh, uh, it, it is a more and more fashionable expression, but it's really not only fashionable, but really important. And uh, I also had the chance to, uh, to uh, 
make a research here in the context of, of IS or about resiliency of uh, Central European uh, cities. And uh, it is, it's a pity that it's impossible to translate the word into Hungarian in what word. But, but you can understand what it's about. So this is a, um, uh, a something which uh, is a capacity or a, a quality of, of uh, uh, something which can to be, uh, it, it, it was, uh, uh, how to say, uh, uh, learned from the uh, medicine, medical sciences and more and more understood for natural and cultural and even social context. And uh, in, in our interest, uh, which is really important, this is a cultural heritage resilience, resilience of the communities. And uh, you can understand that uh, uh, cultural heritage is, can be really seen as a basis for resilience rather for the regeneration of historical cities. And uh, uh, maybe it is a definition, a sustainable network of physical systems and human communities capable of managing extreme events during disaster, both must be able to survive and function under extreme stresses. Okay, and uh, um, uh, I, I think it's, uh, uh, it's something which is very much important, not yet enough uh, um, used and understood. Uh, it's also very much connected with the, with the capacity uh, or in embodied uh, energy and capacity of cultural heritage. And uh, if you are looking for different examples uh, worldwide after disasters or uh, natural or man-made disasters or catastrophes, you can understand that man in many cases uh, uh, the uh, resilience is based really on cultural heritage. And uh, you can also uh, recall some examples from, from uh, uh, history after the Second World War, like uh, uh, reconstruction of the old city of Warsaw, which is uh, uh, not only an act of uh, technical reconstruction, but also a, a, a very strong expression and also a basis for, for uh, community resilience of, of Polish society. And uh, the other uh, point is about the uh, the. Uh, uh, diversity uh, and and uh, uh, I, I do think that uh, uh, that this resilience issue is very much connected also with diversity because uh, um, it also it, it, uh, it is rooted in the in the local and and uh, specific cultural heritage uh, values and of course it's always possible after a catastrophe to, to restart the life, restart the community life uh, on, on a global international standard basis, but it's not exactly the same as using the existing roots and values. And uh, of course, uh, this is a, a cultural heritage uh, as a key component of cultural diversity is a critical consideration for any strategy to build the resilience of communities. And uh, resilience is applies to both people and the built and natural environment is shared by both physical and social factors. And uh, okay, um, I, I make reference here uh, to the uh, one more uh, program here, maybe the basic program here in Köseg. Uh, the, the, the particularly important in this respect, the traditional land use by historical towns and similar traditional connections between the town and its vicinity. This is the creative city, the sustainability. A uh, lot of you uh, meant, uh, mentioned or, or met already this one, which is uh, very much connected with, with sustainability and, and uh, cultural heritage, but not only cultural heritage, but also uh, uh, creativity and others. OK, two more points, shared heritage. Uh, this uh, expression started with a very strange uh, meaning. It was an ECOMOS framework uh, and was mostly meant as a, uh, the uh, colonial heritage in different uh, independent uh, countries. And finally, it's changed the meaning and fortunately became a kind of expression of understanding of common heritage. And uh, last year, we had in Europe this uh, European Heritage Year, which was really a, a good uh, initiative really to recognize this heritage as a common one. But recognition of heritage values, it values is not always easy. Uh, first of all, I want to tell you 
that nothing is created intentionally as heritage. Uh, heritage is possible uh, to, to, to recognize later on. The, the, the things are created for normal uh, personnel or community use, and later on it became an, as, 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 or, or respected as heritage, as also um, a value for, for future development. And the other one is uh, that heritage values became a community assets, but sometimes uh, changing borders or changing uh, nations or with migration and other issues, it is it's possible that uh, today not, uh, the community is not the same as it used to be when the heritage item was produced. I show you the, here this example from Wroclaw, from Pol Poland, the, the former Breslau, uh, uh, former German part of, of this uh, uh, point of Europe. And this is a Centennial Hall was constructed by, by Germans and today is uh, very well kept and recognized as a, a local heritage in this part of, of, of Poland. And uh, of course we do have also not, not, not only beautiful productions of humanity, but do have also so-called uh, dissonant heritage, Let, let's say it's from a, picture, a very sad picture from, from Birkenau, and uh, you, you know that uh, Auschwitz-Birkenau also in the World Heritage List, like Hiroshima and others. So we, we should be really aware on that, that heritage um, uh, and, and cultural heritage can have very different messages, and we, we should not have fear to recognize that uh, some of them are uh, a message which uh, which uh, for commemoration and not to, uh, to repeat it. And uh, human rights are also uh, connected with heritage. I don't want really to enter the details, but uh, more and more it is an emerging approach uh, also in the world heritage cooperation that not only we have to be happy with uh, keep heritage as a such, but also respect the local communities and sometimes conservation is really uh, 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 our conservation approaches are in a, in a really in a clash of the local interest. And sometimes development uh, are much more important from the local communities as to keep something uh, as uh, as used to be. And uh, changes are always there, and it's, it's very normal and natural. But a change in itself, as an expression, is not neutral, even not positive. Sometimes, if you are looking for, for um, advertising for elections, uh, just uh, uh, written for change. But what kind of change? It's not, it, it, it's really something important. So, in, in, in correlation with or in connection with cultural heritage, change can be positive and negative. And we always have to not only identify the carrying capacity of cultural heritage items, but also we should identify the limits of changes and we should to manage of changes. And of course, we also can be uh, can aware on different trends and tendencies. Sometimes, like in, in this Hungarian uh, example, this used to be the original one and today is like this, so it's a reconstruction for tourist attraction. And of course, we do have also heritage industry and of course, we also always have to learn about heritage uh, and we should understand the ten trends and tendencies where we are moving on and we to be able to manage uh, the positive uh, changes. And uh, of course, uh, uh, heritage is a basis for understanding, source of inspiration, innovation and creativity. And of, of course, diversity is very much important and uh, uh, which is of course, for you, it is well known that cultural heritage is a very had a double side, like a coin, expression of common and the special, and both are both of them are very much important. And cultural heritage is in, in a, inevitably important for learning and shaping identity. And I don't want to enter into the, the, the uh, points of authenticity and integrity, but just to underline that in different large cultural regions of the world, there are different meaning. Authenticity is not the same in China uh, or in Japan or, or in other Asian countries like in Europe. So the, uh, the reconstruction issues are also very much connected with this one. And of course, uh, when we are looking for uh, social contact and, 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 and the uh, uh, human part of this, or heritage always um, can be seen as a, as a, as a source of cross fertilization and world heritage can be seen as a laboratory and uh, may I quote one of my colleagues and friends from ICOMOS, Yuka Yoki Lecto, who is uh, 
a Finnish uh, expert, but uh, working in ICROM in Rome. Uh, he was uh, understanding the, the outstanding uh, answer on the environmental challenges, social economic challenges. This is really important. We, we should not copy or, 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 or repeat we, we learned from, from a culture heritage, but we should uh, use as inspiration and innovation source and creativity. And conclusion from a Central European perspective. So globalization has its paradoxical feature and historic cities regeneration could give the most appropriate answer how to assure individual solutions to satis satisfy globally valid expectations. It's a local answer, global expectations. In this regard, the errors and gaps present in the Central Europe region, we are in error, of course, for historic cities have been useful to conserve specific values, cultural heritage assets, which could be used in the future for lifting the competitiveness. And one of the main, one of the main challenges is to clarify, identify decisive potentials of cultural heritage and unveil means and tools how to explore those resources, effective yet sustainable in, in connection with historic towns together with their neighboring, neighboring regions in Central Europe as a laboratory also for other regions of the world. And it is necessary to recognize cultural heritage assets as basis for the identification of possibilities of innovative and sustainable management of values and resources, which have to understand and use a source of inspiration. And uh, before last, uh, I think, uh, is uh, my slide. One of the main challenges is, OK, uh, to clarify, identify, this is the potentials of the answers given during previous centuries on the different natural, social, economic challenges coming from the outside world in a broader sense. And wise use of the culture had assets in the broader sense is a solid basis for the generation and redevelopment of cities together with their respective regions in order to convert them into the quality of creative cities. It is vital to be ready and able to identify additional capacities hidden in cultural heritage and promote their use on the reu or reuse with the embodied knowledge, energy, and value in use in order to enhance qualities and competitiveness of localities mostly marginalized by situation resulted of inequalities emerged, emerged during the last periods of regional development activities. And the very last message, however, from this very local or Central European perspective, we should not uh, only look inward, but one should always look out of the box, which is the, of course, the main emblem of IESC. Thank you very much for your kind patience.